Good morning, Uppity Unicorn here, and while it may not be morning for you, it is certainly morning as I am recording. So Darian and Alexia from Put a Ring on It on OWN. So this is not my favorite couple. I don't know if I have a favorite couple of uh, this show. I think I just have favorite individuals. Anyhow, um, but the reason I think this is the couple that I wanted to focus on is because Darian represents, I mean, they're like, what, like 46, let's just say 50 million African Americans, right? Let's just round up. He represents millions, at least 10, 15, 20 million African American men. Who have serious commitment issues. And Alexia, again, let's say there are 46, 50 million African Americans. She represents millions of African American women. Let's say, I don't know, 10, 15 million who could really use a femininity makeover. Now, from my perspective, this is where the two of them are suffering. When you look at Alexia, you see this former athlete who played basketball in Europe, college educated. The girl is pretty. The girl is thick. The girl is kind. She's forgiving. She's been with Darian of the field mob for 14 years, and he has had not one, not two, but three outside babies on her. You know how many babies she has? None, because she's still trying to do it right. You can tell she was raised some kind of a Southern Baptist Christian. She's not trying to have no children out of wedlock, and even though he has her creep, used up her beauty years, creeping into her 40s, she still has not given birth. She was not interested in having a family in the wrong way. And I praise her for that. And I think that is really, truly admirable. (sighs) Darian still thinks, you know, I don't know, maybe the field mob is going to make a comeback. I I don't know. Maybe he thinks, like, I think he got with Alexia somewhere around the height of his career. And that they are both still feeling the effects of that in terms of, you know, his celebrity and him being known by other people and him going out and hanging out with different celebrities and, you know, groupies and that leading to all the children this man has now on this woman who he says he loves but won't marry. So when somebody Samuels asks you, why aren't black women married? It is very clear that Alexia wants to get married. It is super clear. It is super clear that Darian wants to stay with Kai. Uh, whoa, Freudian slip. I said Kai. Uh, stay with Alexia. Kai is the one he went on all those other days with on the show, right? Beautiful teeth, beautiful skin, super duper curvy. I mean, she looks like very much a video vixen. You could put her next to... What's her name? Ketoy uh, Johnson from I Like the Way You Move, uh, the Outcast uh, song that happened way back then in the early 2000s. I mean, and I wouldn't say he wants to stay with her like, like he's in love with her, but he is obvious, very is obviously very comfortable with her. Like that's his life. That's the most stable part of life that he knows. What Darian really wants, what Darian really, really, really likes, Spice Girl, yo, I tell you what I want, what I really, really want. He wants Alexia to stay with him as he knocks down multiple women. That's what he wants. And he doesn't want to marry her because he feels like, you know, a lot of men have 
such a regard for marriage that they don't want to get married because they're just like, oh, well, if I mess up, then I fell at the ultimate thing that a man is supposed to do in life. So they try to skip that by just not getting married at all and dying alone. I mean, if you go to the different nursing homes, when you are talking dying alone, like somebody Samuels likes to threaten black women with, it's a thing that a lot of black men are suffer suffering from. And a lot of these black women... Um, they're surrounded by siblings, surrounded by their children, grandchildren, all kinds of things. And they are the least likely. Black women are some of the least likely people. Least likely to end up in a nursing home. Because, uh-uh, mama could stay home with me. Uh-uh, you know, mama, we could get you one of them hospital beds. Uh-uh, right? Right? Dying surrounded. Period. Anyhow. Alexia is too rough and I feel like she missed the curve of hey there's a femininity movement come join it. I really feel like that puts her in this game of Texas hold 'em or fold 'em like she has the beauty, the character, she has she has everything she needs to be a wife. She's worth the ring. By, by far her character the way she carries herself the way that she like like her personal conduct like she's a decent woman she's been with this man for 14 years and ain't stepped out once that's a long time to be with somebody but she is about as masculine as that man and I think because she has so many other great qualities that she's able to hold him. But if she was more feminine, she'd be able to fold him, if that makes any sense. She's been able to hold him, so-called hostage, for almost 15 years. But to fold him into marriage, I think there needed to be a little bit more of a vulnerable aspect to her that isn't there. And um, this daring guy, I mean, I'm just going to go on ahead and say it. he's not got a real good character. He's not, you know, a, a really good person. Um, and it's not even because of the cheating, because there are men who truly love their women and they are guilty of this and that number of, you know, strikes against them when it comes to infidelity. But like he... is incredibly self-centered, is incredibly selfish. And they're so grown. Like, they're both, like, in their early 40s. Like, you don't change much after that, if at all. Everybody wants to talk about how your, you know, prefrontal cortex is not fully developed until after age 25. I'm like, well, these people are grown, grown, as in matured, as in, as in who they are has come into fruition. That fruit is all the way ripe, so ripe that it, it will stay ripe for a period of time like every fruit and then begin to rot. It's, it's not still changing. And so I think somebody is going to have to yield Somebody's going to have to say, okay, I am always going to be disappointed in this part of my life. I am always going to be disappointed when it comes to you and your need for infidelity. Or I am always going to be disappointed in you when it comes to how you look compared to, you know, a woman like Kai. And here's the deal. What's cool about Darian is that he's obviously not a colorist. Because when they sent him on them dates, you know. He chose a dark-skinned girl. He chose Kai. He chose a girl almost the same size as Alexia, right? Almost same size color and face. Almost same size color, face, hair, except that it's looking like... It's looking like, you know, she went to Dr. D'Souza, you know, got that BBL. It's looking like she went to, you know... Dr. Miami got them boobs done. It's looking like she went to, you know, Dennis so-and-so and got them veneers done. Like, like she's keeping herself up. And she's got two children, right? And I think that was the thing that really pushed Darian, the field mob rapper, away. 
After that date where she mentioned having two children and wanted to know where this was going, he ran. Again, this is a guy who I would be interested in knowing whether or not that he has a father because this looks like, you know, fatherless male behavior. They're allergic to commitment. They're allergic to responsibility. They're allergic to standing on their word, saying something and meaning it. They need space to go back on something because the future might hold a better option. Now, it's so crazy because they're always like, oh, women are never satisfied. They're always looking for a better option. And I'm just like, how can you say that about women when they be with these, you know, old and dying men? But you have, you know, somebody, Samuel's talking about, you know, oh, well, I can just go get another 25-year-old and another 25-year-old and another 25-year-old. And I'm like, okay, well, then tell the people you're a John. Just just, just say, okay, you know, uh, prostitution is a thing. I like escorts. Like, just do that. Oh, he has. Never mind. Never mind. And maybe that's why that person is so popular when it comes to love and dating and marriage in the black community because... We have jacked up values when it comes to it. And those of us who don't get called old fashioned, get called antiquated, get called obsolete. mm -hmm. But Darian, I feel, represents millions of African-American men. Alexia, I feel, represents millions of African-American women. Not all. But they resonate with a lot of people. So many African-American women who are in their 40s were told, Gen Xers were told by boomers to be masculine, to be tomboys. We couldn't even like a dress. Wear a dress to school. You trying to be fast, girl? And I'm saying we, even though I'm I'm a millennial, but it's because I was raised by one of these Gen Xers who was raised by a boomer. And everything is about closing your legs and not being fast and whoop de woo 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 Whereas white women will, you know, toss birth control at their daughters at 13, 14 years old and just tell them to be safe and, you know, put them in pink and whatever. And they cultivate this level of femininity. You know, um, we were rewarded is what I'm trying to say for being tomboys. My mom, prototypical tomboy, point guard of her basketball team, went to state, became an adult, became a cosmetologist, right? She's got all that femininity, but also a basketball coach, you know? So there's that masculinity as well. And my mom was feminine enough to hold a man, fold him, right? Of course, my parents were married, but at the end of the day... It's a bad recommendation that African-American women gave their daughters when they were like, be a tomboy, be a tomboy, be a tomboy. Because it made everything unbalanced. So now you are him and he is you. Because we weren't telling the boys, be a tom girl. And so now it's like, you know, you're the homie and he wants you to be the homie. He wants to tell you about all his girls. Have you ever seen these couples who sit down and talk about how thick another woman is and how whoop de woo woo woo? Like, I definitely hear me out because I definitely admire, I, I, I acknowledge the beauty of other women. Like, I know, like, I would have to, uh, I would have to take a couple seats if Jill Scott came to town. Like, I just, I just would have to, right? It is what it is. Uh, She's beautiful, and my partner definitely thinks so. But, I mean, some do it, like, for sport. And the girl does it to prove herself to him. Like, see, I'm not jealous. See, I'm, I'm, no. No. What the women on Love and Marriage Huntsville have in common is that their femininity outweighs their masculinity. Some of them by far and some of them by enough to just, you know, well, that's why I'm married with this husband in this life, you know? Um, Darian and Alexia really, um, Darian and Alexia are what I want the younger millennials and Gen Zs to avoid being. 
And I'm a woman, and I know from from watching African American women, we can't on our own. We cannot teach boys how to be men, but what we can do is teach the women how to be women and to attract men. And by that, I mean a man from any race. Because low-key, a lot of these African-American women who are these baby mamas and you're so single, you're so unmarried, they're with a Darian. They're with the daggone Darian and they've been with him for 17, 18, 19, 20 years. And I saw Darian's elekes around his neck, so I don't know if he's into Orisha or if he's into Hoodoo, if he's into Santeria Praharia. But I, you know, he was wearing his elekes, and you know, when you're into that kind of thing, when you see it, you know. When you know, you know. And so he's got all these elekes around his neck, and I'm just like, he, so maybe he's, uh, in terms of his values, he might be a hotep. And when I say that, you know how the hotep, and this is another thing that somebody Samuels doesn't talk about, right? When these hoteps say, like, and I'm going to quote Dr. Umar, you don't need the white man's paperwork, right? And he's going around talking about polygamy and going around talking about marrying two women at a time, which is another video for another time. But I'm just like, you obviously can't do that legally because it would be bigamy. So these are going to be off the record marriages. These are going to be, let's do a little Islamic ceremony in my basement or at the mosque. Let's do a little ceremony in bed where, you know, I put a ring on your finger and you put a ring in mine. Let's, you know, on mine. Let's blah, blah, blah. These unofficial things. It's like, and these women will be like, okay, I guess, I guess that means you're committed to me and, 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 and we're married. And when he dies, you have no control over what to do with the man's body. You can't fulfill his wishes because you don't have those rights. Right? So there are a lot of people out here talking about my wife, my wife, my wife, my husband, my husband, my husband. And they're in this hotepual agreement. It's a hotep union where there is no, there is no license. You can, you can, I mean, there, look. They're not even so much as common law. Oh, let's just keep the white man out of our business. Let's keep the government. Let's keep the state out of our business. We ain't none of their business. What what does that white man have to do with me committing to you? And all of those are great arguments. And that's why women fall for it. All of those are great arguments. Now, in reality, what's that guy got to do with you? What's that guy? Well, well, well nothing. But I need the rights that are secured by a marriage license. So me wanting to be married, it doesn't have anything to do with that white man you keep talking to me about. It has everything to do with me and how I believe that I deserve to live and be loved. You guys. That's all I got for Darian and Alexia. And while Alexia is a, a great person, I, that is what that masculinity can can make you risk. I actually think um, if Kai didn't have those kids, and if Kai didn't come, you know, correct about looking for Ash, she should have came by there. She didn't make a mistake, you know, about, you know, where's this relationship going? I think Darian could have married Kai because Darian is 40 some years old. He's got 50 to look forward to. And men, black men, I mean, because here's the deal. A lot of non-black men, like white men, for example, they get married in their 20s, in their late 20s, okay? But it is the vulnerability of death that wakes a black man up usually. And oftentimes he doesn't really see it because black men age so well. I think the only men who age better than them are like maybe Asian men. Asian men will be 12 for like, you know, 50 years. And then at 51, they look 100. I don't know how they do it, but it is it, it, what happens. Um, anyhow. I had a Chinese, I had a Chinese friend named James Chan, right? And his grandfather, he, he he's Chinese, right? His grandfather had been smoking cigarettes since he was a 12-year-old boy. 
and then raced James and won, okay? <laughs> so no, African Americans aren't the only people who are, I mean, aging well. I mean, if it, it's Asian, no raisin, okay? The sun is not about to turn them into raisins. Um, we're not the only women with a hang-up. Oh, black men call it a hang-up about how we don't age. And really, we might age better than certain people, but really, in reality, the only people that we age better than are people who are non-melanated. So it's not that we're claiming to age super well, because I think Asian women age to some degree like black women. There's not a, a really big difference there. I mean... No, I think it's just, you know, of course, we live in a world where the standard is non, you know, non-melanated. And that necessarily causes you to age quickly because melanin is a UV rays, you know, protector, protectant, and they don't have that. But um, what I was going to say is I think a lot of black men, because they look so young and so whatever for so long that they don't catch it. And it, it creeps up on them in their body. It creeps up on them in their health when they realize, I'm not going to make it and I'm scared. And that's when they want to, will you marry me? Will you marry me? And they'll let the one that they loved, that they really wanted to be with, that they were too selfish to, commitment, to commit to, go by. And then the very next woman who comes along, he still has that energy and he ends up marrying her. He still has that energy and he ends up marrying her. The best way to avoid this, y'all, pick up on your femininity and stay away from men who don't like, whose masculinity isn't intact. And and y'all, these days, masculinity is not muscles. Congratulations, you're so tall. Congratulations, you used to be an athlete. Nah, because we've seen men bigger than you all over prison, prison, taking it up the front side, the back side, the mouth, every other. No, let, let, let go of the physical appearance. Bretman Rock can knock out half half of these men who are calling themselves hetero uh, heterosexual, and he and he's very much openly gay. Like, really look for the masculinity, really look for the protector and provider, really look for the guys who are careful with children, really look for the guys who stop swearing when when groups of women come around, really look for the guys who are who have that orientation. And don't ever let somebody come into your life. Because I, I, I made this mistake. And hear me out, because ultimately I still have the life that I want, right? But I made this mistake of giving a guy a chance or just like, you know, why, why the labels? Why do we need labels? Why can't we just go with the flow? Never. Ever, 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 ever. Don't do that with yourself. Don't do that with yourself. Nobody should be demanding or asking for to live with you, to have access to your body. None of that. If they're just like, why the labels? I was literally on another African-American woman's channel. um, And I actually unsubscribed because she basically gave her channel over to a Dusty Hotep. And he was just like, well, that's my people's. And I'm just like, you're, you're gray. Your dreads are gray and you can't call her your woman. You can't call her your lady. Like D'Angelo managed to when he was a kid, when he was 19, 20. Well, that's my people's and we, you know, we, we, we do what we do and we like, No. Why are you afraid to claim her? She did all kind of hocus pocus to get you here and you, and you, ooh. But you know what? He is another one of those Gen Xers. And hear me out because all in all, let me, let me keep it a buck. Gen X is my favorite generation. And Mr. Uppity is Gen X. I'm just saying every generation has a subset of, you know, you could get with this and you could get with that. There, there's diversity. And he just comes from that group of, you know, and they pass that down to millennials and Gen Z like like they're just afraid 
of commitment and marriage. And, you know, you have these women throwing in your face, nanny, nanny, boo, boo, we are the preference. And I'm just like, okay, well, go get baby mama if, if that's what you want for your future. You're not getting a ring. There's so many more mixed kids in foster care now than, the, than there were before. Like, like okay, we're, we're going to go get married. Marriage is not antiquated. You think the LGBTQ community fought that hard? Ooh, emotion. Ooh, my nose is burning. Fought, okay, okay, so I'm, I'm officially uh, shedding a tear. They fought so hard for the right to get married. And of course, you know, when you're from Seattle like me, you know, you're, you're, you're in the thick of it. They fought so hard and they cried so hard to be able to get married and to make those commitments and also to have those legal benefits down to the point where they were given reparations for being unable to wed. And then you, with your African-American self, you have the nerve to say that that, that marriage is not imp- important. No, married lives matter. How about that? It, it's a big deal. And you have these men snuffing you out of it at every turn. And they're just like, oh, well, we're just going to blame you. You're not married to me or your preferences. So the problem is you in that regard. It's not that African-American women don't have their problems. Like, like we already talked about Alexia and what she's got going on. Alexia is in denial and she wants that man. I don't know how this show is going to turn out, but I think it would be better if Alexia just moved on. Because people are like, oh, you know, Darian doesn't want to date Kai anymore. I'm like, Darian got that woman's number. If he wants to see Kai, he's going to see Kai. In 14 years, he has had three different kids that he knows about. Lord knows what, what kid he may or may not know about. He knows how to reach Kai. <sighs> Avoid these men. And don't let them lie to you because there is a certain level of agreement you have to be in in order to even allow a person to lie to you. There is. It's not that you're not a victim. It's not that, you know, you could prove it. But like your intuition, when you get that gut feeling, you have met your ori. You have come into contact with that which is willing to tell you the truth, even though your eyes have not. I feel really sorry for Alexia because I feel like she is emblematic of the black woman who fights good fight. She is emblematic of the black woman who, I'm going to stick beside him. That's mine. That's my man and I'm going to stick beside him. All of that. He has a whole nother apartment somewhere. Like, sis, come on. He has a whole nother apartment somewhere and they talk about it. They got into some kind of a fight. He got an apartment. They reconciled. He kept the apartment. I'm like, what do you think he does? He gallivants as a single man. And is mad at you for not just taking it and shutting up like his grandma did. That's why all these men, why can't you just be like my grandma? Well, my grandma and grandpa were married for this long. Yeah, and he had a whole other family across town. And your grandmother was illiterate and couldn't do anything about it. How about that? She couldn't do anything. She couldn't get a job. She had been knocked up with too many kids by then. She had been outside of her house. It it wouldn't have made sense. She had to stay home. She had to stay with him. It was your grandmothers, those women who you were telling us to be like, who said, hey, don't be like me. Don't do it how I did it. I'm miserable. I'm about to die miserable. Best day. I I just saw a viral African-American grandmother standing at the, the grave of her husband and the grandkids are grown and she was just like man I loved him so much I loved him about as much as he loved the white girl down the street and and whoop de whoop 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 and I couldn't keep him in my bed and you know when you get that age you're allowed to say what you want to say when you're on your way out you get to say what you want to say and that was it so we know what this is you're not going to tell us any differently about our own culture. We know, we know what this is. And 
And even though I believe that there are, like, I don't believe that infidelity equals now you have to get a divorce, he doesn't love you, blah, 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 he doesn't respect it. I don't believe that. But there is a certain kind of nefarious cheating that is just like, dude, like, like, sis, you got to get out of there. You got to get out of there quick. Or these wives turn up with mononucleosis or herpes and HIV, like, like, you got to get out of there quick. This is reckless. He's reckless. So anyhow, um, that's the video. Pray for Darian and Alexia, uh, for Darian to develop and for Alexia to, you know, for her heart and her head to be at peace. She deserves it. I just, I, I hate that she waited on him for so long to the point where now, like, if she has one of these geriatric pregnancies, you know, she could, she could die. She could, I mean, birth defects, all kind of stuff could happen. And she waited on him. She waited. I would say, I would say don't, I would say don't give a man more than three years, three months to three years. He, he knows what he's going to do with you. I mean, and that is if you're looking for marriage. I mean, some of us, we have committed ourselves not to being mothers. We have committed ourselves not to putting ourselves in a position where we require marriage. Okay. But if you do, three months to three years and then get on out of there get on out of there don't let them use you up 